So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy Ellen, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. All right. So this video here, the top ten unsettling discoveries in the Great Blue Hole. Now I have no idea where we're going with this, but knowing most amazing top ten is sure to be interesting, and of course. Anything to do with any type of water or the ocean, I'm here for it because as we all know, most of it is still yet to be discovered. So anytime we can make some new discoveries, I'm here for it. All right. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button on the screen somewhere, join the family and let's check it out. The Great Blue Hole is a giant marine sinkhole located at the center of the Lighthouse Atoll, and man, is it full of mysteries. What is up, Top 10 fam? Welcome back. I am your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and today we are diving into the beautiful blue waters to cover the Top 10 Unsettling Discoveries in the Great Blue Hole. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have tracks. Okay, so the last thing we want when talking about a huge sinkhole that happens to be in the ocean that holds many different secrets and mysteries at the bottom is to hear that we have found tracks, but we don't know what's causing these tracks. In December of 2018, a team of explorers and scientists decided to finally take a trip down to the bottom to see all there is to find at the bottom of the Great Blue Hole. We'll talk about this expedition a lot today, so remember it. Erica Bergman, who was the chief submarine pilot on the expedition and who is an oceanographer, explained that they had observed tracks at the bottom of the sinkhole, but Wait, 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 we gotta go back, bro. Imagine being able to get, that's kind of like that, that vehicle they was in on the movie Jurassic Park, one of the, the latest ones they did. But look at that, right? Imagine being able to go to certain depths that you couldn't otherwise in this right here. And you're in this kind of like globe and you you able to kind of look around and, and see and man, I am not jealous of them, bro, because I know that was a scary, scary scary event for them fam to go down there and just be amongst out your element and into the ocean's element that's remember it erica bergman who is the wow. chief submarine pilot on the expedition and who is an oceanographer explained that they had observed tracks at the bottom of the sinkhole but that they were unable to identify them and that they remain quote open to interpretation this alone isn't the most terrifying thing there but when we take in some of the other things we know about the hole like how it's the second largest marine sinkhole in the world or how there could potentially be an entire cave system lurking somewhere in there more on that later by the way, things start to get a little more unsettling. It quickly becomes clear that these mystery tracks are only a drop in the bucket of the. Does that make y'all like? I had to go back to that picture. Hold on. That. Does that not make y'all like a little eerie? Like, ah, like, not, it, it, I, don't sit right with me. And <laughs> just knowing that it's places like this that exist and we don't know, it's so much unknown about it. You know what I mean? I think the unknown part is the part that makes me kind of uneasy. And and you know what I mean? I think it's that part of it that makes me uneasy. Just the unknown that we don't know what's down there. It quickly becomes clear that these mystery tracks are only a drop in the bucket of the mysteries of the Great Blue Hole. In our number nine spot today, we have stalacites. The Great Blue Hole is a really popular diving destination, despite the fact that divers obviously can't go all the way to the bottom for a multitude of reasons. When diving here, you definitely need quite a bit of experience beforehand, and for those lucky ones who have done the work, they might be able to get just deep enough to see the incredible stalacites this sinkhole holds. While these are gorgeous to look at, they are part of the reason that we know some of the most ancient history behind this place at all. Stalocytes are only formed when water is dripping down stone. This gave scientists the insight they needed to realize that this wasn't always a place that was submerged in water. In fact, they concluded that this was actually a big, dry cave and one of the most prolific eras in the history of our beautiful planet. This That's scary to know that the water, you know, you know it. But it's like you put it so far in the back of your mind that you don't think about it, that the water levels are continuously rising like that. You know what I mean? You look at places like New Orleans and Louisiana, you know what I mean? You just, you think about those times, but then you, you shove it to the back of your mind. So when it is brought to the forefront again like that, puts it back there and you're like, 
man, like a lot of things are gonna be underwater soon. Crazy. A cave in one of the most prolific eras in the history of our beautiful planet. This means that at some point there was probably a ton of stuff living in it. They believe that the cave likely formed during the last ice age, so sometime prior to 14,000 years ago, but at the end of the ice age it ended up flooding, collapsing, and thus we have the great blue sinkhole. In our number eight spot today, we have movements. This is one that really ties into the last one with the discovery of the stalocytes. Of course, when they first found them, they took some samples so that they would be able to confirm their above sea formation. And when doing this analysis, it was realized that not only did they form above sea level, but that some of them were off vertical by about five degrees and that these changes were consistent. This gave another very valuable insight into the history of this location and led scientists to the conclusion that there must have been some past geological shift or tilting of the plateau underneath at some point. This event would have been followed by a long period of relative stillness. This change in the stalocytes showed us that the land must have been moving as well, not just the sea level rising. It's not the most unsettling thing on this list, but it certainly is cool. It's really amazing how such a small change can show us so much. In our and then Queen was just telling me today that I think so prayers to everybody first and foremost in south georgia because she was telling me i haven't had a chance to look at my phone and deep dive into it but she said it was an earthquake that took place today somewhere in south georgia so prayers to everybody in that but hearing that type of talk you know what i mean earth moving that type of talk just again uneasiness <laughs> you get what i'm saying like ah, ah you never want to think about that so when i hear people say yeah we have earthquakes here and they normalize it it's just always mind blowing to me. For seven spot today, we have trash. It has become abundantly clear that there really isn't any place on earth that is free from human influence, and that most definitely includes our litter. If trash can make it to the deepest depths on earth in the Challenger Deep, of course trash can somehow find its way down to the bottom of the big blue hole. During that 2018 expedition we spoke about earlier, the team stumbled across more than they were expecting when they found a littered two liter Coke bottle. I'm glad it wasn't Pepsi. And they also found a lost GoPro. They were even able to see that this GoPro still contained some vacation photos. Safe to say that it's not the most remarkable discovery they made down there, but it should be something that might be a little concerning to us all. In our number six spot today, we have sand. Like I mentioned before, this sinkhole obviously has an incredibly rich history, and we are just starting to learn about the things that it holds, but it takes time, equipment, and money. Why does that look like a drain? Anybody else get that vibe from it looking at it? Like any minute it could create a current or a suction and and like suck them into it and they're just swimming along like nothing's not a care in the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the aerial shot that's doing it for me, making me think that though. You're just starting to learn about the things that it holds, but it takes time, equipment, and money to really be able to have these sorts of large expeditions like the one in 2018. There might be fossils or other things just waiting to be uncovered that we don't even know about yet, but the clock is ticking. As it turns out, as quickly as the blue hole appeared, it might also be disappearing. Apparently there are waterfalls of sand that are continually falling into the hole and it's slowly but surely being filled up. It's like a real, very very large, kind of scary hourglass, essentially. At least it's not something that's gonna happen overnight, so for now we still have time to admire its beauty and take a look at all of the mysteries it might be holding. Maybe it just serves as a reminder that nothing is permanent, except for the internet. In our number five spot today, we have more caves. So remember Erica Bergman we talked about before in the first one? She was the one who like led the expedition in 2018, the submarine pilot. Well, she didn't only talk about mysterious tracks. She also explained that there is an enormous cavern close to the bottom of the hole, like a huge unexplored cavern in the middle of a huge mysterious marine sinkhole. I'm just saying, that's more mystery than I can handle. This means that there could potentially be a large underwater cave system and the great blue hole is just the beginning of it. She said, quote, the roof has collapsed on this particular cave, but the whole reef could be dotted with similar caverns which simply haven't collapsed into blue holes. Wow. Yet. Who knows what these cave systems could be hiding? Undiscovered species? 
answers to some of the ocean's mysteries, the possibilities really are endless. In our number four spot today, we have marine life. So of course, this stunning location is a popular tourist attraction. People really want to dive here and I absolutely cannot blame them. But one thing you may encounter, should you choose this as your next adventure spot, are sharks. There are a few different species of sharks that enjoy calling the waters around the Blue Hole home. They include bull sharks, Caribbean reef sharks, and hammerhead sharks. Surprisingly, these sharks aren't even at the top of the concerns list when it comes to diving here, as shark attacks truly are quite rare. Sharks are pretty gentle creatures and we're not their favorite thing to snack on, but they are big, they are powerful, and they can do a lot of damage when the going gets tough or when they feel frightened or threatened. And that is just one of the many, many reasons that this is an area that hopes for more experienced divers rather than a place someone would recommend for their first solo dive. See, for me, <laughs> I can't, I, maybe if I'm good enough to tell them apart before I go down there, but I get down there and wouldn't be able to tell them apart. So all of them would be dangerous sharks to me. I ain't no way I'm getting this close. It looks like this shark is literally taking a picture with this dude. Like, like literally taking a picture with this dude. No, you can see the uh, the darkness in this shark's eyes. You see that? Nah, man, that's that's too close. That is too close. And then she said, you know, if they ever get scared or frustrated, they are strong and powerful. So how do you make a shark frustrated? How does a shark get frustrated? How do they get scared? Like, I need to be able to know that to be able to be down there this close i mean this if this dude farts like this shark can smell it you know what i mean he better hope his fart don't have no blood in it because then yeah he in trouble divers rather than a place someone would recommend for their first i ain't never heard of it before having blood in it i'm sorry i don't even know where that came from <laughs> my bad y'all just so low dive in our number three spot today we have nitrogen another thing you will likely encounter should you choose to go diving here is something that is actually quite common for those who like to venture and dive in the deep sea we are talking about nitrogen narcosis basically divers of course use oxygen tanks to help them breathe underwater these tanks normally don't just contain oxygen they contain a mix of oxygen nitrogen and some other gases as well this is all fine and well but the deep sea is not like our lives up here. After about 100 feet, the increase in pressure can alter these gases, and to be honest, the further you go, the more the pressure increases. When these altered gases are inhaled, they can have unusual sort of intoxicating effects on the body. This is something that people who choose to dive here will experience, and it can be disorienting to say the very least. These effects are reversible and should wear off when you get to shallower water, but when you begin to feel the effects, it won't be at the time you're ascending, your dive instructor will likely be only leading you deeper into the waters. This is all just a long way of saying it's a step you need to be aware of and prepared for. In our number two spot today, we have toxicity. So the simplest way to put this is that at the bottom of the great blue hole, it is poisonous. After you get about two thirds of the way down to the bottom, the water is just full of hydrogen sulfide. Great. Another way this water could kill you and take you out of here, huh? Like we needed something else. Did we? No, we didn't. <laughs> two thirds of the way down to the bottom, the water is just full of hydrogen sulfide. This means that there is little to no oxygen left down there, which is exactly why any marine creatures that get stuck down there are sure to meet a gruesome fate, but it is also why the water is actually toxic and corrosive. If you get deep enough without the proper protection, this hole will kill you and any other living thing that goes in it. It is truly unforgiving. But imagine telling you know what I'm saying? Researchers, scientists, whoever that, that are exploring this and researching it, that they can't go deep because of that. They're going to figure out a, a way to go deep. They're going to figure out a way to bypass it. Like telling us no, it's like a cardinal sin. We're going to figure out a way to get by it. And that's not, not necessarily a good thing and not necessarily a bad thing. It just it, it just is what it is when it comes to us, man. 
Some of the experts in that 2018 expedition said that there were thousands of remains of marine life, like conches, which is a result of these creatures just getting a little too close to the edge. One explorer even said that you could see little prints where the conches presumably were trying to climb back up before being asphyxiated by the toxic water. Yeah, so basically while it looks beautiful on the surface, the Great Blue Hole is just a macabre marine life cemetery. In our number one spot today we have remains. By far the most unsettling of all of the discoveries on this list are the bodies of two divers that were found during this 2018 expedition. There have been three divers who are known to have gone missing after going diving in the Great Blue Hole, and to be honest, we aren't sure which two were found or exactly how they died. And that's the thing, they probably didn't know about the poisons at the bottom. They saw a hole, did a little bit of research possibly, and then dove for it. And probably succumbed to that poison or something like that. Or marine life that they didn't know that was unexpectedly down there that could have taken them out. Could be a huge octopus or something like that. You know what I'm saying? The reason for this is because, despite the fact that they were found, authorities decided that the best thing to do would be to leave them. Of course, rescue is a complicated process, but they agreed and decided that, quote, they're at peace where they are. It serves as a reminder of how dangerous it can be, even for those with all of the experience necessary. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. They just left them? Like, what about their, I hope their family got a, the option to say, okay, no, we want to leave them where they are. I hope they just didn't choose to, to leave them. I feel like your family has a right to, you know what I mean? Some people may want to give you a proper burial, lay you to rest the way they see fit. Like, ah, that one right, that number one didn't, didn't, didn't sit right with me too well. I don't know. That one, <laughs> yeah, that one, uh, I'm, I'm not, not a fan of that one, but. Overall, though, amazing video about an amazing deep blue hole that just appears out of nowhere and could be gone pretty soon, man. Again, you see why I do so many ocean videos and different things like that? Because it's always something new, always something discoverable, always something fascinating about it, man. It's just, I don't know, bro. It's just fascinating to me. So as long as it continues, I'm going to keep checking it out. You get what I'm saying? This was top 10 unsettling discoveries in the Great Blue Hole. Y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what you think. All right? And stick around and stay tuned. The next one I'm gone. Peace.